Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hey hello. Hey. How's everyone? How's everyone, guys? Yeah. Great. How's everyone? Welcome, welcome to 3 at 3. Uh, today, we have Jeff Baker. He's the, I call him the first Avenger. Because <laughs> Jeff was with us the first, on the first episode. He took the risk to... to to share with us and being on this crazy journey and you know he's back again because he's awesome such great to see you again thank you for being here and we have kevin uh, from data meaning he's a, a sales consultant here at data meaning and we have of course aaron uh, my name is jamil and we're going to talk today about data plus music or you know specifically data visualizations related to with data related to music and we wanted to show you this first because you know um this data is amazing. It really is an amazing data. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there are like so much you can do. We highly recommend you. We're going to put this link on the chat, but highly recommend you to, to look into this uh, specific. Uh, it's a big gallery specific to data visualization related to data. They're like, it's just amazing visualizations. If you're a fan of the Beatles, Rolling Stone, if you use Spotify, I mean, you're going to be here for hours. I know that Jeff, I've been here many times and, and Aaron, and I was just with Kevin early this morning here. I mean, you just look at this Led Zeppelin. I mean, this over and over again, amazing visualizations. If you like data and you like music, this is one place that you can be entertained for a long, long time. And uh, Jeff, have you been here before, right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Whenever I, when I went out looking for a good viz on music, I search, you know, go to Google, whatever, and uh, you know, actually, it all comes back to Tableau Public. That's where I found uh, my viz. I'm going to share today, and mm -hmm. uh, there's so much out there, and mm -hmm. it's incredible. I mean, the world of music has so many different dimensions and ways that you can slice it up. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a, an exciting uh, time today talking about music. Exactly. So if you've never been in the show, so that you know what, what we do, you know, we have three panelists today. I'm going to be coming out with the host today. And, you know, Jeff, Aaron and Kevin, the, each one of them have a data visualization that they're going to bring in, which is a mystery because none of us have seen those data visualizations before. And the idea is for us to grab what is your first impression? You can actually be in the chat, share with us whatever you, you think about these visualizations. You know, we, we're going to talk about what is confusing. How can we make them better? That's the idea of this show is just to learn about different perspectives, right? Like Jeff said when in the first show, this is the only place where you can talk about like data visualization developers about, you know, different perspective, uh, you know, like to learn about looking at the visualization, maybe in a different way and how can we make them better? And, and this is just about collaboration, right? Like there's a lot of things out there about data visualization. But this specific show is more about how can we be, be better about collaborate together, and that's the idea of the show. Anything that you what would you want to say, Jeff, about when you were participating the first time, and your impressions at the at the end? I love what what you said at the end. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, being the the um, the first uh, one of the first guests, I guess, on the three at three, uh, I really liked that there were so many different um, insights that we could share as. As we just talk about the the different views that you see, you know, it's so easy to have just your mind locked in on what do you think of when you're thinking of a specific kind of data. And yet when the when we got together and we start talking about it, you know, Aaron has input, I had some input, you had some input. And the net result of that is I think all of us walked away learning something that we didn't consider before. And then that, you take that back into your day-to-day -day work where you're working with this data. And, you know, you see yourself grow just by those conversations. And I know I've also tuned in and watched the show. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can tell you that it's that same experience for me when I'm in the audience. I'm like mm -hmm. getting great insight from people who love this stuff and have a passion for it. And, you know, that is one of those things that makes this an exciting thing because exactly. we can learn and share and grow together. And, um, you know, I think that's great. So let me tell you guys, uh, before we just start, I wanted to ask you one question. Um, so when, since we're talking about, you know, music, I was just thinking, oh, you know, like, let's say, what, what do you guys like about music? So let, me, let me just start. So when I am, you know, relaxing or on vacation or dinner, I like to listen to probably jazz, right? 
I like Bossa Nova, which is kind of like jazz from, you know, from Brazil. Jazz, I like Sinatra. Uh, when I went, when I'm in my car and I want to, you know, be motivated or I want to do something quick or go to exercise, I usually, uh, you know, listen to reggaeton, reggae music. I listen to rap music and techno music. And so, what, what, what do you do? What, what, what about you, Jeff and, and Aaron and, and Kevin? So, I mean, for me, it's uh, at night, it's usually Italian cooking music on Pandora. Yeah. Awesome. So we get that cranked up in the house. My wife and I are cooking dinner. You got, you know, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin going, all that kind of stuff. So we really like that. There's just a, you know, it's really kind of a jazzy type music too. And just mm -hmm. lots of neat stuff there. And then um, in my past life, long ago, I was actually mm -hmm. a DJ on a Christian radio station. Wow. So uh, we had, um, you know, CDs. I still have like crazy amounts of CDs from the day oh, wow. that we did that. So when I'm here in the office doing my thing, I usually will have like some kind of uh, Christian music going through Pandora, something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and then I also use Spotify. And the thing I love about Spotify, which ties back to mm -hmm. the music, is you actually had the ability to get some data about your Spotify playlist and trends and the things that you do. So mm -hmm. if you are really into Spotify, there's some things that you can do to get that data exported, and then you can start working on your own visualization based on the way you love music. So encourage love you to it, it. And if you guys are in, in the chat, uh, like Andrew Kim, he said that he likes to, like any, he wants to see any violin charts or like, yeah, uh, tell me, uh, Andrew, what do you listen when now you do have a baby or when you know when you're trying to relax and it's pretty hard? What what do you listen to? And Aaron, what what do you listen to? What is your favorite? Uh, well, for the most part, I sit at a desk all day and and uh -huh. we're working, so I've listened to all about all the music I can. So I use mm. Amazon Music recently, uh, mm. and they have I'm sure all the platforms have it. it it's uh, like a, mm. a 2000s, all 2000s music or all 90s mm -hmm. music. And uh, okay. again, play play those old ones that I hadn't even thought about <laughs> uh, for decades uh, and, and really get into that. And that's uh, that's how I kind of keep motivated is is by listening to music. My wife is the opposite. She she has to have dead silence in the house in order to get anything done. Well, I, that silence is not good for me. So as long as I'm blasting anything, I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah, and I enjoy uh, um, Spotify. Kevin, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Yuma. No, Kevin, what what do you what do you listen to when you're trying to relax or motivate yourself? Yeah, yeah, I I'm primarily Spotify. I don't use really any other uh, music sources, uh, and I'm not necessarily genre specific. I'm more artist, and so I do like folk a lot at night when I'm trying to calm down and relax with the kids and my wife. Um, yeah. I also love. Uh, early 90s rap music, some Tupac or Biggie, uh, <laughs> big fan of the, the old school rap. And then I was curious, Jeff, if you used to rock out to the um, the old DC talk. Still yeah. have some of their <laughs> albums, yeah. Actually, it was at a um, an event here in Orlando and Toby Mac was performing recently. It was uh, really awesome. And, you know, he's, he's very similar to my age. So, um, you know, it's like, man, that's so cool that he is still doing great. So, yeah. That's awesome. So here, yeah. you know, the last concert that I attended, I wanted to tell everybody this, was on April 2019 here oh, wow. at the Amway Center in Orlando. Pre-COVID, right? I was very happy with the prices of the ticket, especially. Very cheap. And um, But it was a Bad Bunny concert. So it's a Bad Bunny is a rapper from Puerto Rico. So... And I was there um, almost very close to the, the front of the, of the of him. I mean, I was like super close, super cheap. Now it's like three three times what that cost. But uh, that was my last concert more than three years ago. And I also use Spotify and uh, a lot of YouTube YouTube uh, videos. But uh, what was your last concert, Aaron? Was your last I went concert? in May, but we saw um, some group called Fits and the Tantrums. We saw it's the really? first time we've seen them live, and the kids love them so. We listen to that in the car all the time, and we've seen them often. And when we it, this past May again, this kind of cove right in the middle or towards the end, or however you want to look at it. But it, the where we were at was all outside. We had our own box. It was like ten feet away from everybody on all sides. They, they delivered everything to you. So it was a great experience outdoors. Great. No, well, thank you. What about you, Jeff? Do you remember? Uh, well, my last one really was the Toby Mac concert, which was that mm. first Baptist here in Orlando. So that was just the other day. 
Um, wow, nice. And that, that wasn't too too long ago. And uh, yeah, so and it was pretty awesome. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Kevin? You remember? Yeah, pre so the last, <laughs> I, pre COVID, I went to two concerts back to back years. And actually, mm -hmm. my wife was pregnant with our children mm -hmm. at both of the concerts. Okay. Uh, and his name is Josh Garrels. He's a folk Christian artist uh, who I've been listening to for a little over a decade. But it was <laughs> incredible. Really cool. Really cool. So guys, we're gonna start right now. Um, I know everybody's excited. So let's 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 start with um, Aaron. Let's start with yours, and so everybody can get a and you know a feel of. Tell tell me what is this all about. So we're gonna start with Aaron's uh, data visualization right now. Okay. So um, so I don't know if you guys know this, but today is um, uh, World Heart Day, something like that. So I, I I wanted to figure out if music could could soothe the soul and the heart. So here, just a real quick, it says in a study in 2020, uh, chest pain soon after heart attack, uh, experienced significantly less anxiety with pain if they listened to music for 30 minutes a day. Uh, here we have all the benefits of uh, like music therapy, uh, recovering from a heart attack, breast cancer symptoms, uh, let's see, stroke patient recovery, child asthma, uh, traumatic brain, brain injury. It just goes, keeps going. So the, the, the benefits of music can be a healing thing as well. So kind of want to lean on that. So I found, came across this PowerPoint. I, I don't really know where it came from, but uh, let me blow up what, what the two visuals are. And there you go. So the topic was <laughs> how, how does music affect our vital signs? So here we're looking at blood pressure and heart rate. Oh my God. So we got, uh, you know, before, during and after they listen to this music and then all the bars and colors are the genre that they they uh, attempted to uh show this so the left side the blood pressure and the right side is the heart rate mm -hmm. so what does it say underneath i cannot see what it's underneath this, the bars this this says before during uh -huh. and after so it's this okay. before during and after so before the music was played while it was going on and then after it was done uh -huh. so, and so and they measured the yeah. What? So the measures are, so this is the, the blood pressure, which is like, uh, is this like 120? And then like over here, the heart rate is like 70 to 80 or 90. Okay, now, now we can see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before before and after. Oh, okay. And this is different types of music, right? Like rock, hip hop, country. Yeah. Each, okay. each of the bars and colors are a genre. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So hip hop is higher than classical music. That's what it says here. Okay. Hmm. The organ and then the heart rate. That's very interesting. So what do you think, um, uh, Jeff? What is your first impression of this, and what do you like or don't like? Um, I mean, it's interesting data. The just the fact of looking at blood pressure and heart rate based upon the type of music you're looking at and we're listening to. And I like the before, during, after, right? So I kind of like the framework of the music. Um, I find the bar charts a little bit daunting, though, because as I'm looking at the before, um, it's, it's you know, what does that mean? And then I'm trying to compare them to the other sets of bar charts. And it's almost like, you know, we always talk about pie charts not being great because it's hard to tell, you know, what the difference is in that slice. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of have that same sense of feeling with these bar charts because of the way that it is. It's like it's a little hard to tell for, to move from one to the other. Um, you know, it doesn't really uh, just like jump out at me like I would like it to do. So that I mean, that's my first glance at, at what those are, those are my thoughts. I love the data, but just I'm not sure the visualization is great. Yeah, this is uh, Andrew said, you know, in the chat, this is 3D looks are the three D looks? Uh, it's distracting. I, I thought the same thing, right? Like it's just this three D look. I I don't like it. It's just getting yeah. more confusing. Then yeah, the you, Neil, you, you asked me what like what these numbers meant, and then I like, uh, I had to guess at what what bar this is on, and then yeah. what these numbers are. Yeah, what is this? This is the blood pressure millimeter, something like that. Okay. So Kevin, what do, what do you think? Uh, I think it's interesting that country music, once you're done listening to it, uh, it gets you going. So 
that's a to me it's strange uh it looks like hip-hop does the same but it looks a lot less slight i mean country mm -hmm. music you get done listening to it i guess you want to go run or something i don't know but if you look mm -hmm. at the blood pressure that shoots up after but if you look at the heart rate it actually drops oh that's <laughs> interesting how's that possible yeah what what i obviously what what i didn't like about this was the color mm -hmm. choices um, and mm -hmm. what, what I did notice was, so here, here's the legend. You have rock, hip hop, country, and classical. So rock is, uh -huh. rock is green, but over here, rock is pink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hip hop yeah. is green here. Hip hop is pink here. Country and classical say the same, but so they mix nice. these colors on the second chart. Yeah. Right. Right. You're so Alan and the chat have a really good point. Yeah. And this is what, something that I was thinking about it. Right. It needs a main headline on the top that says, what is the story that we're trying to tell here, right, Alan? It needs to say something. Hey, if it's country music, then, hey, country music will increase your heart pressure, but it will reduce your heart rate. Right. Like it, it, it needs to have, what is the main story that they're telling? It doesn't say that. So it doesn't. It's missing. So I'll give, yeah, I'll, give, I'll give you some context real quick. It doesn't have it here okay. because I just put these in words so I can get these on one okay. page. But okay. this, was, okay. this was the PowerPoint. And, and they go gotcha. through, you know, what the question is. They provided the topic, uh, the, the, the research behind it, the variables and controls, the hypothesis, the materials, the procedure. Okay. They provided a, a, a data table for all of the data that they have in here. And then they pr produced just one chart at a time here and one chart at a time here. So that's why I had it in Word. So they do provide those, that in, a, in a, a PDF and a presentation form. But obviously, they don't have like it's not here in this in this view that I have. So we have a couple of people from the chat already. Great advice. Quick fix one from Len Atul. Uh, Len says add a music type selector slider. Right, Jeff? What do you think about that? Yeah, I like that. Uh, that's that's really cool. Or even show one. You know, give you a. Well, I know it's not a. This is not an interactive dashboard. It's a chart, right? But I can't help but want that interactive feature to where I can, you know, select a certain genre of music and just see data relative to that genre. Um, you know, so I, I want to make that interactive really bad. <laughs> yeah, one, <Okay. laughs> one, one thing that's not clear here, and they only explain it after their conclusions as this data only contains five participants. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Where's that? Yeah. This is we need to be careful. And this maybe doesn't apply to three at three now. They also oh, they, I also thought it was funny that they said we were not properly trained to take blood pressure and heart rate. So some of the calculations <laughs> might be wrong. Okay. <laughs> so this is this is gonna be in the bot chart column. So you okay, you said um, you, you said there's great ones out there, so you challenged me to find one that wasn't. So yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. It's my fault. It's my fault. I told I told him tried to find bad one. He he really did. Nailed so, it. He really he, nailed so, it. You really so I'll mention like what what I would change about this. Obviously mm. the colors. Um mm. I would I would make this a connected line chart. I wouldn't make it a bar chart because you're adding way mm. more color here than you need to. Uh mm. and, and but if you're gonna keep it in this manner you know if you just had the connected line charts you could see this this orange to orange goes up and you see this orange and orange goes down you'd be able to see those just the points you don't need all the color kind of clouding okay. or cluttering up the page right okay so heather johnson says the faint diagonal line in the background also distraction is a distract that does not add to understanding of the analysis correct because it's, it's kind of like it's a 3d chart 3D, it's yeah. so confusing and andrew said the visuals to still be able to stand alone and he doesn't even he doesn't like the uh also he said that he needs a, a red title len says for folks who are color blind blindness issues the color choices will be a challenge for them yes definitely this is a rainbow yep um and then says and and michael said it feels we're supposed to compare the values during the before during and after the three charts group and make it difficult to do such comparison it will be helpful if the chart was organized or categorized, I'm sorry, by music type over the time period, right? What do you think, um, um, Jeff, what do you think, correct? Yeah, yes. that's that's a really great call out, Michael. That was perfect. Yeah. And uh, Andrew said, they did describe the songs of the beats per minute with 
with some. I will be curious if there is a correlation of the uh, BPM to the heart rate. Yeah, the problem is it's only five people. Andrew, so only five people took this. Or yeah, we don't know what music they listen to other than the, the yeah. Genre. Yeah, this reminds me of some high school kids had a project and asked yeah. us yeah. to come over and put this together. <laughs> and, it, and it could have been. I, I didn't. I didn't get into the details of like what this is and where this came from. Uh -huh. I just. I just found it. So it, it could. It could have been a high school project. It's. 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 It's crazy. It's. Uh, this is go. This goes to the junkshard.com and the other one. Yeah. So you know, there. one of the great points of that though is is the reality of knowing know the data. What is the data behind the charts? Um, what is it? Who put it together? How reliable is it? You know, what what does the data really contain? Um, because if we make cool bar charts, but then the data behind it is five people. You know what I mean? Because you you don't expect it to be that. Yeah. So um, so yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, I think the five people were loved country music and they were very excited to answer the question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. probably that was the problem here. So the, the thing, please don't take this, don't apply, don't worry about right. it. This was the idea was for you for everybody to learn something or to make it better. <laughs> yes. Um I think we should go with that. Uh, Devin, you wanna go and I'm, I'm gonna have Jeff at the end because his specialization is pretty amazing. Um, so let's go with uh, um, now with Devin, uh, Kevin, I'm sorry, Kevin uh, Sharp. Let's see, let me find it really quick. Uh, did you share your, your chart? Um, yeah, okay, perfect. Is that working there? This one is really cool, guys. This one is an amazing chart. Um, I'm gonna ring a uh, kickback or something. So here is to please Andrew put it on the in In the in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes. It had like a ring or something. Yeah, that's better. There we go. Oh. Um, so I chose Queen. Um, fun story about Queen. I grew up listening to Queen because of my father. And when I was about, I think 10 or 12 years old, we were in the uh, car driving home from school. And I, my dad's a pretty even kill guy. He doesn't ever get super mad. He doesn't get super sad. He's just really even kill. But Bohemian Rhapsody kicked on and uh, he went nuts. He sang with his hat. He was dancing and, and throwing his hat around. And the more I watched him, the more I fell in love with Queen and we would work and listen to Queen as we went. Um, and so that's part of why I, I chose to go with, with them for my data visualization here um and so there's a lot to this one it's really neat um you mill did you say you know who built it in tableau yes uh, so it was uh, this was built by um right um this was um and this was built by um ryan ryan and this was uh um Okay, so this is just an animation to start with. And actually, if you click on the interactive piece here, can you guys see that? Yes. So this is all of their albums lined up here in the different years. And if when you hover over different sections, it'll tell you the year and the total words. So primarily that's what this the visualization is built around is the words of it. And so this one was in 73 and this one's interesting. This is their largest album with 15 songs and they made it the same year as Queen 2. So they put out 26 songs essentially in the same year. And if you go through, you can see all the different, how many words each album had and then the year it was produced. And then when you come down here, it'll actually show you from greatest to smallest, the different uh, word count per song. Can what, you guys is, see that? what is each bar? So each bar is three different points. It's the total words, the album average, and then the overall average is 198 per album. 
but they they do a breakdown of how many words per song. Okay, so each of those bars is a song. Yes. Yeah. I thought I thought one of the song one of the albums had like twenty six songs on it or something. Um, I thought so as well, but this down here is saying. Uh, it shows down here. You see the number of songs per yeah. album. Yeah. Maybe they put those together at one point. Um, and then I think this night of the opera. Here's Bohemian Rhapsody. I actually thought there would be a correlation between more words and what their greatest hits would be, but it doesn't really say or show uh, what greatest hits were because they have a lot. Um, but there's no differentiator here. I like that instead of having a, a bar in that tooltip, it's the little music icons. Oh, down here? And yeah, when the, yeah, when you hover in there, it's, you've got the little, the little uh, music notes. Instead of, you could just put a bar there, but they put the music notes in. It's a good touch. Yeah, it's a pretty cool visualization of this. Um, and then when you go below it, it has a little points here but there's no there's nothing really that pops up or anything to do with it which I thought would have made it a little bit better um, it, it has a super cool factor but it makes me wonder like what's what's that all pointing to you know <laughs> yeah it's hard to draw a correlation between the different songs uh, another one bites the dust that's a great song do we know? No, probably not, because I'm, I'm wondering if each uh, album, it looks like it's just sorted by number of words down. I, I would, I'd be curious to see if it was like the first song in the album had the, had the most. Because that's why I, I thought I was saying this. As, as the album goes on, you get less words, uh, but it's probably just sorted by uh, top to bottom. Yeah, it's just a word count, essentially, is what this entire tool is built around. There's Killer Queen. For being an eight-minute song, I'm surprised it's the second longest song <laughs> or the second, you know, most uh, amount of words there. Is there anything you guys would have done to make it better or bring more clarity to this? You know, it's a little confusing, not confusing, just curious, like the jazz album has more words. It's the, it's the top album with word 2,800, 2,826. Mm -hmm. But it looks like A Night at the Opera would be more because of that huge spike there at the front of that album. Yeah, with the 2,500? Yeah. So maybe maybe it would be helpful if that was... Um, I don't know how you'd color that by, by that word count. Then you got enough colors in here as it is, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then here towards the end, it looks like they stay pretty even kill. Because every album, in the beginning at least, have a few bumps. Here, here, then here, skip a few. And then the last three are all pretty close to each other at least. I guess their counts are. Pretty drastic. from Rody. What's the, in the bottom left, you have presentation mode. What, what options do you have there? So this one is just that, what we started with. It's just gonna run through and show, but it's not very, it's not interactive apart from the word or the, yeah, the word count. Can't really hover or mess with it at all. Yeah. But yeah, this is a it's a it's a really neat tool that they built. What do you think, Jeff? Is there anything you'd change on this? Um, I I like it. I mean, I think one of the things I, I love the look of the chart, right, and the flow and everything. It, it's the, it looks neat. The colors are kind of cool, um, you know. So I think it looks good from a from that perspective. I, I'd like to maybe see a. Um, like a floating text box underneath there that maybe gives you a little more context as to, you know, what this is about. So as you look at it, 
you're not doing so much, you know, um, trying to figure it out, and solve the puzzle with uh, hovering over all the different things, but maybe just a little bit more detailed description around what to, what it's about. Something like that would be good. Yeah, this is very interesting data. Uh, we've talked about this in previous shows of like sometimes yeah. the visual is like awesome, but do you, is there anything that anybody can get out of it or can uh, relate to? And this seems like one of those where like you really just want to grab someone's attention with this visual. It's more of a kind of an art piece of like like look how right. look it looks and, and it does. It has that wow factor. Yeah. For me, what when I look at it, so I'm I don't know why I was thinking this way, and this is the idea of the, the, the show, right? And I wanna add um, to ask Jeff what if he thought the same thing. When I was looking at it, um, I thought that going this way, right? And going down, it was gonna show me something on the bottom. It's like right. it's, it's, when I look at it, I said, like, "Oh, okay, there's gonna be something underneath." Or what is the idea of going like a funnel? Because then you're thinking that it go to, it's gonna give you something at the end, but it doesn't. And that is something that I don't understand. I don't understand what is the reason of doing that funnel if it's really not telling me anything because. As you can see, each bar represents how many words that specific song has, right? So you can see the one at, at night of, at the opera has the highest song with the highest words. And yeah, that one. And and then, you know, it, it makes sense. I like the color. I, I, like, I like all the different aspects of the things that you can discover. So you hover here, you can get the, the year of the album. You hover here in another place, and you can see the specific uh, song. And but I don't understand what is the idea of going like. I mean, it looks great, but you will think that there's going to be something underneath, right, Jeff, or something right. else? Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be good if they had. Um, I know in Tableau you can embed things, so the videos or audio. Like if you could you're covering on a song what song is that and you click on it and then underneath where it goes down you could have that embedded youtube video that takes you to that song so that you can like oh i remember that song that was a great song but to your point you have it lead to something not just a empty empty page yeah so michael really liked this visualization he said that the biz does a great job to combine the total words words by album and songs uh says what it does right that's correct for additional insight, there is some enhancement, but I think it's easy to read. It's clean, um, and he doesn't he doesn't think the animation is needed. And there's someone from LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn you say, does the visual represent something from music theory? That's right. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Music cheat or an instrument? Like like me, you know, I'm not a professional musician. This comment may have some humor. Or, yeah, that's right. Maybe that's the idea, right? Maybe this is like reading uh, some. Um, I don't know, maybe something music specific that I'm missing. Uh, but for me, I thought that it will have, the funnel will have something to end to it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is great. It's a really cool uh, visualization. Anybody else from the chat that wants to share with us what they think about this visualization? How would you make it better, Aaron? How would you think you can maybe make it a little bit better or maybe other additional enhancements that you can do? Uh, I, I think that the box, the top, that's colored in yellow is not needed. Uh, you know, I don't know if you great and make that a gray, but it's it's like it, my eye is drawn to that bar. And maybe that's the point. Maybe he wants to see that the albums, they want us to see that the albums are sorted by release date and the songs are sorted by total words. Mm -hmm. That's the point he had there, but it's just a little, uh, a little much for me as, as you get into it. I'd also, again, curious of how we might be able to like rank these albums so it's easy to tell what's what's first and what's last. I wanted to know the average. Like you see here, I am guessing the average is a little bit higher than 2000. But I wanted to know what is the average of all the albums? What is the average song per album, right? That doesn't that, that I cannot I can see which one, but I cannot see what is the average of all of them. Yeah. And, and, and Robert says, are the words distinct words or does it count when they repeat words? Good question. Good yeah. question. Uh -huh. Yep. You know what? I think it would be really cool to add to something like this because, you know, 
when I look at it, it's like Aaron mentioned earlier. It's kind of like a piece of art, right? The color and the, the curve of the lines and, you know, that I think is pretty artistic. But I think it would be really cool because there's definitely room in the canvas to do this, that if you had like a hover action that would then display the album cover maybe in one of those open wow. spots. And then you could also see more data about that specific album. Like, you know, how many number one songs were on that album mm -hmm. and, you know, things Good. like that. That's just a real simple to do with the hover action, you know? So, um, and then I think Aaron, you had mentioned being able to play a little clip or link you out to YouTube or something where you could, you know, check into that. That would take this to where I'd really be like, wow, I want to know where that, that dashboard's at, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and even, since even it's a, a photo, since it's a photo, when you hover, yeah, you're, you're keep, keep it there. Uh, uh, Bingo. Right, it's right there in the green. So what yes. if it's underneath? It shows you that album with a video yeah. with what Aaron said. A little bit more information. For example, does they, did they want any academy or like a, a wars for this one? How what, how many gold uh, albums? Yeah. I mean, what does it? how many sales that they have for that specific song or that specific album i don't know something i'd also like to see a highlight filter because like mm -hmm. i i wouldn't I, I know some queen but i don't know what song is on what album but i know of mm -hmm. a, a song let me type in that song name and i could see where it's at on this without having to go through every single one of those right mm -hmm. that's a great call out that's a very good a very good i think enhancement right yeah that, that filter we're finding yeah. specifically what you want. That's a great point. That's a great point. Anything else, uh, Kevin, that you that, that you would like to improve or do? Yeah, I just my big thing is I'd love to see the greatest hits down at the bottom somewhere. Yeah. Where know what the correlation were with those because some of these songs most of us have never heard of, but mm -hmm. the really popular ones that we love, maybe there is some correlation between words and or the count of words and and how popular it was but really this is just a words and albums type right. of music. No, i like that yeah we, we talked about this before it all depends on what you want to show what what's the story you want to make when he made this right. dashboard he wanted it to be total words by album and song he had that purpose but as mm -hmm. other people are looking at it other people are looking at it, we want we we were like we're curious because that's what data visualizations are supposed to do it's supposed to you're supposed to ask more questions like well what about this and what about this so we all have our own idea of like, man, it'd be nice to have this or this or, or something, have something else in here. So I, I think for what he was trying to do, he, he succeeded at, at, at providing that story. Right. Correct, correct, correct. And yeah, if he's, if he's put this much work into it and it's this beautiful, it would be great to be able to just to have a few extra features yeah. uh, to really fill this thing out. Yeah, so this, this visualization hour, I remember, uh, if, if by Rody Sambosk, is it Rody was a uh, previous Sam master a couple of years ago. He he lives here in Central Florida, so we have talked to him before, and he was part of the Tableau user group here in Orlando too. So he's the one that um, created this visualization. Of course, he's amazing, and he does great, amazing visualizations. So you, you can yeah. tell by by how great this looks. So awesome. Awesome. I, I think we should go now for Jeff. This is the big one. This is the 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 the, the, the one here, the award winner. Pressure. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. You ready for this one? This is pretty cool. So uh, I'll start off with a couple things. So we've been talking uh, data wow. visualization today uh, related to music. Uh, there is okay. the million song data set. So um, if, uh, if you have such a desire to dig in, um, you can go out and download this thing. Um, you know, you're going to need a little time to download it. It's 280 gigabytes for the whole thing. Um, you can grab a sample of 1.8 gig compressed, right? So if you want to play with that. Um, but I thought, you know, got to... You got to think, how could I make it, right, to be able to do something really cool with it? So millionsongdataset.com is where that's at, and you can dig in and play with that if you'd like. So the the visualization I want to walk through is uh, by one of the, you know, uh, Zen Masters, Kevin 
Fleurlage, Fleurlage, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, but this this just caught my eye, and you know, it is hard to find things that um, you know you might want to do better when you start working with one of these visits by the Fleurlage twins because. These guys are really awesome at their craft, but I'll tell you what I really liked about this um, visualization, because I started to think, well, maybe I should build something. What does it look like? How do you get to it? What would it be? There are so many different dimensions when you start thinking about music. And I love this one because, you know, one, um, I remember eight tracks, right? <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> Um, I remember records. This is when I spent a lot of my money was buying records, you know, and then I remember when cassettes came out. We're like, yay, cassettes. That's awesome. And then <clears throat> I, I remember being at the mall, seeing the first CD players come to life. And I'm like, yay. And now I still I have thousands of CDs from back in those days, because guess what? That stuff didn't wear out. So I still have lots and lots of that. And then, you know, the whole digital age comes to being. And, you know, uh, so this this chart, it's a it's a really sweet area chart. It just kind of really helps tell the story at a glance for what's happening in the industry. But then, you know, this is a Tableau dashboard, right? So it's not going to leave us hanging at that place. So there's some data here that gives you a little background about what's happening in the music industry you know, and what the sales right are. And so you can see stuff. And then I really like this. So if you scroll down, you know, you, you don't see anything. Sure. It's a black screen. So, I mean, Jeff, I'm um, sorry to interrupt. Yes. You. Okay. Can you make sure your, your, uh, your screen is showing down? And I'm not sure if we're looking at it yet. We're still looking at the million song data set. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry for that. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Okay. How about that? Can you guys see that now? Um, um, we can see us. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. We need to see that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay. Here we go. That's fine. We're live. We're live. So that's okay. We're li live. It happens live. You know? Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Right. See yeah, the right. day the music right. died now. Now we got okay. it. There you go. Now you got oh, it. Okay, sorry. sorry about that. Okay, so now, I won't now. rewind everything I just said, but you can kind of okay. get a sense of the area chart now, right? When you see this chart, and again, you know, um, Kevin is one of the Tableau Zen masters. Um, I follow him. If you haven't looked at his Tableau public page, there is just an, an infinite amount of amazing things there. Plus. Uh, the Floral Edge Twins, they also have a blog. So there's just tons of stuff that you can dig in there. But um, this is what I was talking about just a moment ago. The the dashboard doesn't just end with the area chart. It gives you some contact underneath here. This is really more telling the story. And then I love the key to hit the continue reading button. And when you do the continue reading, it comes back and the dashboard will load and it gives you more details um, underneath here. So, let's see if it's loading correctly. Come on. There we go. Can you see oh, the napster popped up there? Wow. And so here's, you know, more story. And as you go through the dashboard, you can continue hitting the, oh. the little button. You can get information that pops up all along the way. So yeah, it's, like it's, this. This, is great. this whole thing just helps tell the story. Mm. So when they're saying the day of the music die, and I've never seen this before, so I just wanted to make sure that you know that I've never seen it before. Yeah. This is great. Um, they're saying because of when there were no more CDs and everything went digital. Is that the idea of saying that a music die, right? Kind of. The, the idea here is that this is when um, Napster started to come online, and so okay. as as people began to connect to Napster and start to share music peer to peer. 
Um, that took a huge bite out of the revenue sales that that really the music industry was enjoying. So all along in here, there's just increase, right? It's just going crazy. Um, but then when Napster comes to life, this starts to drop off. And when you see the digital sales, digital here is probably more in line with when the Apple iPhone starts to come out. This is 2004. Um, the line underneath is a little hard to see. But so this is when we start actually buying digital music as opposed to getting it for free. So there's this huge chunk of, you know, uh, real estate that the music can be um, really lost as a result of people sharing music for free through Napster. And, you know, again, I love that there's a story here and that the way that um, it connects all the way down the line. Again, this was one of those music um, dashboards that actually tells the whole story all in one place and you can navigate it by just hitting those buttons and the text gives you the detail. So I just thought this was a fascinating uh, way to visualize it. Wow. What, what, Jeff, is, what else is there neat? What else? Jeff, could you hover where the cassette and the CD kind of where their points meet there on the left? What year was that? Um, that is 1983. Wow. wow. 83. I would love to see, you know, uh, a little more of a tool tip here because I, I see, can you see those little dots move as I mm -hmm. move along? Right. Yeah. Well, I'd really love to see um, some detail, some context, because it's just so easy to provide it. It's a little hard to see the year timeline there. But, um, you know, again, tooltips would be real easy to just do a little tooltip work on there. And uh, that'd be really useful. Now, I personally, I've never used an area chart because I don't think they work well in almost any capacity. This is the first area chart that I've seen that I actually understand, and it, it's completely clear to me what's going on. Yeah. We have Alan in the chat. I mean, Alan, thank you so much. I mean, everyone that is in the chat, please uh, click on different links that Alan have provided with an amazing visualization that in the on this on the reference on this topic, Alan, we're gonna have to make uh, another music, uh, you know, that I have. Three of three because you have really good uh, dashboards and he's sharing one where he did um the same topic and this is a like vinyl making a uh, resurgence and you know if you guys can go there and, and check it out thank you for sharing um, I, uh, jeff another thing yeah. i like about this is uh, unlike most visualizations or articles you can just scroll through it uh, down at the bottom and be done with it for this yeah. dashboard, you have to be engaged. You have to want to continue to see what's going on by clicking those buttons. Yeah. Right. That's something I've never seen kind of, before, right? Mm. Yeah. And it tells you the progress. It tells you the progress, which is incredible. Yeah. It tells you where you are at. And then look at that one, Pandora and Jude. I like this one a lot. Can you keep it, keep it there? Let's look at that. Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, Apple, man, that's great. What what does the gray bars mean? Year over year change. Yeah. Okay. What is what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the year over year change in the okay on the gray bars, and then we have the blue. Okay, so those are negative. Okay, gotcha. So that's uh the positive or negative uh, change. For each year, okay, and this is, let's see, very interesting. So it's a year-over-year -year change in recorded music sales. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that last paragraph explains that it took 16 years since Napster to finally get back to what it was. Profitability. You can see in the last couple of years, Jeff, it's getting, you know, it's positive, it's positive, finally, the last yeah. three years. Yeah. I think it was because they passed new kind of like regulations or laws or like copyrights. Is that right? Right. And they, yeah. it seems like Apple 
and um, Spotify also are paying more to the artists than they were did before. So they have like new agreements, mm -hmm. I believe, something like that. Very interesting. Since 2015, you can see their Apple Music. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool. So you guys, what, what do you guys think that it could be something that you could make maybe better or easier to understand? I mean, it's really long, right? It's very long. Um, I think if, if some of this information was in the tooltip at the very first chart, that mm -hmm. would be yeah. helpful. You know, you don't need all of it, obviously. And you want to tell the whole story if you want. But you talked about when did uh, when did the iPhone come out? Uh, when when was the the legal uh, thing go down uh, that that had to make Napster close? Like what what were those key things that made those changes in that graph? You know, if there were if those some of those points were in that in that tooltip at the top, that'd be um, a little yeah. better to understand as as time goes by. Right. I think that's great, and that's easy to do to add that kind of functionality. Even to pop up a bar chart or something, tooltip is really, you know, it's, it's so easy to do that you could probably build out all of these charts. And in some way or another and embed them in tooltip type feature along the top. So, I mean, you could do a lot, maybe not everything, but mm. I agree. I like, let's, let's talk about, guys, let's talk about this one. What I want everybody to know, what, what do you think? So someone from LinkedIn says, the evolution of the music industry seems like a robust topic to consolidate into one easily digestible visualization. Can it be done? I think it can be done. What do you think, Jeff? I think it can be done. I think so, too. Yeah. I can. That's the thing. There's just a sea of information out there. And what is the story that you're trying to tell? You know, I think that as, you know, we work with data, being able to, you know, define what is the end goal? What is that main point that I want to get across? And then build toward that, you know, is great. So what about this, Aaron? What if this in this specific right here, Jeff, you hover where it says, let's say 2010, right? And this visualization moved to the left, and then you have another one that comes up and kind of like shows you everything here. And they have to be interactive, right? Or yeah. like with just full tips, then you can show a little bit of the story of what happened in every single area. Right. Yeah, you could do that where if you clicked on it right underneath it would give you that context for that year you know maybe if it was just a a yearly roundup of what happened during those years so that that this area chart could make a little more uh sense of what you're looking at yeah yep because it is it is a very real it, 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 a lot happened in this time frame from the 70s mm -hmm. till now oh man uh, lots of different platforms like it, it there is a lot to, to put in there which is why probably it's so long so yeah if, if you wanted to do that, you probably would have to take out some of that um, to, to kind of get it uh, that clear picture. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Anybody have anything from the chat that wants to share before we're almost done today? Uh, Aaron wants to show you something, uh, right, Aaron, for the uh, sign up sheet. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I think we have it shared in the comments, but of the yeah. of the about forty or so slots, uh, or just over forty slots, we have half of them filled. So yeah, awesome. yes. So thank you, Jeff. Great visualization. Thank you so much for being here. And we That's wanted perfect. to share this before we we are leaving today and and for the next show next week. Um, but here is uh, we have a sign up sheet. Uh, every single week we have a theme. We're very open to change any anything if, or to add to it. Of course, uh, we want to make it as you know as easy as possible. And next week we have tacos. Who doesn't like tacos? I mean, we already have two people. This is incredible. Right? Uh, we already have two people. If everybody loves tacos, and it was uh, Aaron's idea. I, I believe yes. me. When he told me, he told me, "Let's add tacos." I'm like tacos, really? I think, was <laughs> right. was I, think, right. I think October 5th is like National Taco Day, so it'll be the oh, perfect theme. Okay. okay, perfect. 
So we have tacos. And I'm seriously, I am going to buy some tacos and eat it here while I'm talking. That's what I'm going <laughs> to buy some. Um, and I think that Andrew Kim, he said that he's going to wear some taco hat that he has. Nice. And, um, so we're going to have some tacos. And it's going to be fun. It's going to, you're probably going to get hungry at the end. Uh, but uh, I think it will be it will be cool to find. I was just trying to think if we could I could find a visualization that is like the history of tacos, like where they came from. I don't know. I'm gonna try to see if I can find something. So in, in two weeks, in two weeks we have uh, maps and uh, geo data. We, we don't have anybody signed up. We we'll email and I will chime in all day long on that stuff. But if anybody has any anything specific they want to talk about there and they want to sign up for it, please do, because yeah. we're always looking for, you know, different views on things. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to also change the topic, right, if there's something more yeah. that everybody was thinking. Uh, one, one that I'm thinking of, if anybody's in the chat want to say yes, I was just thinking in doing pets, cats and dogs data. I don't know, maybe that's something that more everybody will be more interested to. Who doesn't have a pet at your house? Probably everyone has something. I mean, at least yeah. a bird or something. I mean, you, you, you have something, even a fish. So, uh, and, you know, everybody, and I have cats, for example, I know that most people have dogs. So, um, you know, pets is something that I'm thinking and maybe exchange this one. And, but uh, yeah, we have Halloween. Halloween, I think is going to be incredible. Uh, we have two weeks for Halloween. What, what else do we have underneath Halloween? And, and we have Halloween, military is already full, HR almost full, Thanksgiving, the one for I mean, I love cars. I mean, that one would be amazing. Um, and e-commerce, holidays, New Year's. That's pretty much what we have so far. Uh, anybody wants to sign up, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to participate. And this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Great. Well, oh, thanks for thank joining, you. guys. Thank yes. you, everyone. Thank you. And I highly encourage you to do it. It's great. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jeff. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will see you, uh, Jeff, again, because I'm, I know you're going to be here again. You're yes. the, uh, I'm coming back for the HR discussion, so I love that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, HR. That's so, right. Thank you so much, guys. And everybody on the chat, thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you next week, Thursday, Thanks, 3 p.m. Bye, everybody. Wednesday, 3 p.m. Thank you so much. Okay.